Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913, P.O. Box 15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. And also, if you are not subscribed to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio, you can subscribe using your favorite uh, podcast software. Uh, including uh, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, or Amazon Music at Amazon.com slash OTR Detectives and have another radio detective program come to you every day, Monday through Saturday. But now, let's get into this week's episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers, the original air date, December the 2nd, 1951, and the title is The Dead Giveaway. The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. Now, from the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Dead Giveaway. It is 1.30 a.m. December 4th, 1945. A single light glows in the living room of a farmhouse four miles from the town of Ashton in West Texas. Inside the house, a frantic young woman tries to place a telephone call. Operator. Operator. Oh, please. Operator. 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 Get me the sheriff, quickly. Is that you, Mrs. Deneen? Yes, yes. Hurry. Oh, this is Mary Lou, Mrs. Deneen. I'm working nights now. Is something Mary, wrong? Mary, stop talking and get me the sheriff. Oh, all right. Oh, dear. Sheriff Ross speaking. Sheriff, this is Mrs. Deneen. You've got to come out to my house right away. Right away. Now take it easy, Mrs. Deneen. What seems to be wrong? Somebody's prowling around outside, trying to get into the house. Isn't your husband there? No. He went to Abilene on business. Something woke me up, and I thought at first it was a bait. And then I heard a noise outside. Ah! Mrs. Deneen, what is it? Somebody came in. I'll be right there. Who are you? What do you want? It took Sheriff Ross less than 15 minutes to get to the Deneen farm. But Mrs. Deneen and her four-month-old baby were dead when he arrived. The sheriff called for the assistance of the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. Jace Pearson? Yeah, Sheriff. You got here right quick. Yeah, I was over the next county when your call came through. Well, I hope you got a little sleep, because you won't get much now. Better come in out of this cold. How long ago did it happen? About a half hour ago, 1.30. Mrs. Deneen called me, woke me up at home, said somebody was trying to bust in. Right in here, Jace. Shot right through the chest, huh? Yeah. 
She leave the phone hanging off the hook like that? I reckon so. Whoever broke in, they broke in just before I hung up. Nothing's been touched, Chase. I know. I had a time getting past your deputies down the main road. The phone operator's been buzzing everybody. We don't want half the county barging in here messing things up, so I blocked them all. Good. Where's the baby? In there, the front bedroom. You can look if you want to, Jace. It's a little more than I can take twice. How old? Only four months, Jace. Little girl. Where'd he break in? Side door, I'll show you. Where's the husband? Abilene, on business. I call the chief of police there. He's going to check the hotels and notify him. Ah, here's the door. It was wide open. That's how I got in to open the front door. Mm. Lock doesn't seem to be broken. Must have been picked. The Neens keep much money around the house? As little or as much as most folks, I guess. But I don't think any's missing. There's Miss Deneen's purse on the kitchen table. Mm, killer couldn't have missed that. You check it? Yeah, about $40 in it. It hasn't been touched. Well, it wasn't robbery then, Sheriff. No. There's no sign of any other motive. But there's got to be one, Jase. Yeah. The toughest motive of all. Because it's the easiest hidden. Hate. The kind of hate the devil wouldn't hold. <laughs> through the rest of the house, but we didn't find anything that would help us until we got outside. It's cold tonight, Jace. Ground's frozen hard. Yeah. If we find a trace, it won't be much. Keep your flash close to the ground. All right. Why are you working back of the house here, away from the driveway? Because I think the killer came in from this direction, probably on foot. Why? Why, you said Mrs. Deneen told you she woke up when she heard somebody prowling around outside. Yeah. A horse or a car coming up the gravel road around front would have made even more noise. Woke her up sooner. Say, that's right. I heard your car coming from quite a ways off. That's why I was standing out in front to meet you when you drove hey, up. Wait a minute. What is it, Jace? A piece of bailing wire. Bent in the shape of a key. Well, that must about be what he used to get in. Maybe. Or maybe that's what somebody wants us to think. Let's take another look at that door. Yeah. What makes you think the wire was planted there, Jace? I'll tell you better when we try it in the lock. Well, beats me why a killer would leave something deliberately. That's what makes me think something's wrong. Now, this wouldn't have been dropped so close to the house. And grab the door and hold it up high. You don't want to mess up any prints around the lock. You got it. Now, let's see how this wire fits. Yeah. Goes in perfect, Jace. Yeah. Watch when I turn it. Yeah. Hey, wire's just twisting. And it'll keep on twisting. This wire isn't strong enough to turn the tumbler in the lock. Then how did the killer get in, Jace? If you ask me, Sheriff, I think he had a regular key. <laughs> sheriff called to have the bodies picked up for autopsy. Then we went outside and started trailing again. We found a few directional traces, but they petered out in the darkness. Can't see anything at night on this ground, Jace. Try cutting back and forth a little further. Yeah, all right. Man, we're following was weaving, trying to throw us off. It just makes it tougher to track. He's got to be headed for some place, some definite direction. We might as well establish which direction. Yeah, guess there's nothing much we can do except this until we have some daylight. Save us an hour in the morning. Then we can track on horses without wasting time finding out which way to go. By sunup, we knew the killer's general direction had been west. The sheriff got his horse from town. I unloaded charcoal from the trailer and we rode. He kept heading west, all right. But there's nothing out this way for miles once he got into those hills up ahead. Any kind of a road between here and the hills? Yeah, old wagon road just beyond the scrub on the rise we're coming to. Does it connect with the state road? It does, but nobody uses it. Maybe somebody did. Is it in good enough condition for a car to run through? Mm, reckon it is. You figure he had a car waiting for him? I had to have a car or a horse staked out someplace. Come on, let's make right for the road. Uh, get up. Get up. Well, yeah. Wagon road lead to any other farm in the area? Used to lead to the old Mullen place, but that's burned out. Nobody living there anymore, huh? No, no old folks dead. Young Ted Mullen moved away a couple of years ago. Oh, here's the road. Oh, oh boy. Oh, charcoal. Huh? 
Headed pretty straight, last tracks we saw. Must have reached the road right near here. Yeah, we'll find some mark if he crossed it and kept going. Hmm. Well, he didn't keep going. Huh? Look. Hmm. Tire track. Had a car staked out, all right. Mm-hmm. Turned the car around here to head back for the highway. Could have been somebody else waiting in the car for him. Maybe, but I don't think so. Yeah, look at the heel marks. Walked around to the driver's side of the car to get in. Yeah. And there's something else here, too. Uh, Dropped this cigarette butt and stepped on it. Yeah. Sure didn't smoke much of it. Didn't even burn down to the brand mark. Well, at least we know what brand he smokes. About all we do know, Jace. Won't be anything to follow at the main road. He sure won't leave a trail there. No. Mount up. Let's get back to the house. <laughs> rode back to Deneen's. As we came to the farm, we saw a couple of cars that hadn't been there when we left. Looks like company, Sheriff. The car next to mine belongs to our lab. The others must be the coroner's. Oh, coroner ought to have been and gone by now. Nope, no, that isn't the coroner's car, Jace. Blue sedan, that belongs to Walter Deneen. The husband? Yeah, must have got back from Abilene. Yes, yeah, Deneen, all right. There he is, sitting on the side porch. Walter Deneen sat with his face buried in his hands until we dismounted and walked up to him. The lab crew was in the house looking for latent prints. Howdy, Walter. Oh, howdy, sir. Walter, I can't tell you how... Don't say anything, please. Ask me anything you like, but I don't want anybody else telling me how sorry they are. Better let me talk to him, Sheriff. Sure, Jason. <laughs> Mr. Deneen, it'd help us a lot to know one thing. You or your family have any enemies? Enemies? Could there be an enemy as bad as this? We know the house wasn't robbed. Have you ever had any trouble with anybody, uh, no matter how small it seemed? Now's the time to remember it. If there was anybody, I wouldn't tell you. I'd take care of it myself. That's no way to be, Walter. Don't go telling me how to act, Sheriff. You didn't come home to your house ten minutes ago. You didn't find your wife and kids... We have found mine. <laughs> Mr. Deneen, why don't you try to get a little rest? We'll talk to you later. Yeah, okay. Anything I can do, Walter, just holler. Yeah. You been able to think of anybody who might have had it in for him? Not a soul, Jace. Unless it was Ted Mullen. The one you told me about? Family that was burned out? Yeah. But, Jace, that was five years ago. Sometimes hate doesn't die with age. What happened? Well, old folks just got to brooding and died off after the house burned. Young Ted blamed Walter. Why? Windmill at the Mullen place was busted. They tried to borrow from Walter to get it fixed, but he turned him down. Ted said if the mill had been working, it would have pumped enough water for him to put the fire on. Well, young Mullen the kind to hold a grudge? Well, oh, after five years, Jace. And he moved out a long time ago. Where? Who knows? Come on. I'll call my headquarters by radio. Maybe they can get a line on Mullen. All right. They find out where he is, won't do any harm to check on where he was last night. It won't hurt any. But I can't believe that a man after... Hey, hold it, Sheriff. Uh, well, that's only Walter's car, Jace. What are you looking at? The design of the tire tread. Look at him. Well, that may be. It's the same design we saw in the dirt road where the killer picked up a car to make his getaway. But, Jace, that was hard ground. Could barely see the tread. And tires like that are standard on lots of cars. Yeah, I know. Just the same. I want to look this car over. Left his ignition keys in. You gonna start it? No. Just want to take a look at the dash. He said he got back from Abilene ten minutes ago, didn't he? That's what he said. Take a look at that temperature gauge. Uh, let me see. Register's cold. Yeah. Only it should be pretty warm if he finished to drive a couple of hundred miles just ten minutes ago. Could have dropped back, Jace. Not in ten minutes, Sheriff. It's a cold morning, but not that cold. Well... I want to talk to Deneen again. He... You see something else? I sure do. Look at this on the frame of the door. Service station lubrication sticker. Yeah. Dated December 2nd, day before yesterday. 18,412 miles. The mileage on the dash shows he's driven less than 200 miles since then. He couldn't have been in Abilene. Well, wait a minute, Jace. I admit that looks funny, but... The man we were chasing, he ground out a cigarette, remember? Well, what about it? I've known Walter since he was a boy, Jace. He don't smoke. Sheriff! Oh, 
on Mary Lou Simmons' phone operator. Who let you in, Mary Lou? I, I told the deputy I put Mrs. Deneen's call through to you last night. He thought you might want to talk to me. Ain't it just awful? You talk to her. I, I was still on the line after you hung up, Sheriff. I heard it all, the shots and everything. Uh, you hear any voice beside Mrs. Deneen? No. No, I just heard her say, who are you, what do you want, and then the shots. That was all. You sure she said, who are you? Oh, cross my heart, I heard it as plain. Guess you don't want to talk to Walter now, do you, Jace? No. I guess not. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Today, the NBC radio network, now entering its second quarter century as the leader in radio entertainment, salutes five new NBC stations. A hearty welcome to these stations and their managers. WNHC, New Haven, Connecticut, James Milney, WFMJ, Youngstown, Ohio, William F. Mag, Jr., WIRA, Fort Pierce, Florida, Douglas Silver, WJBS, DeLand, Florida, Clarence L. Menzer, and station KCIL, Huma, Louisiana, Frank Cornwell. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers, and tonight's case, Dead Giveaway, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. I didn't want to question Walter Deneen until I'd had a chance to check on his movements. The sheriff and I drove into town and called the Abilene police. The answer didn't fit. Don't think there's any doubt about who he was, Ranger. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. Well, guess that does it, Sheriff. Dean was in Abilene, huh? Uh huh. Checked into the Harris Hotel yesterday about noon. Checked out again at two ten this morning, right after the police notified him of the murder. Police could have spoken to anybody on the phone. Yeah, they didn't tell him by phone. Police sergeant went up and told him direct. Uh -huh. Description of Walter tallies too. Yeah, but there's something that doesn't tally though. Mileage on that car. Could be something wrong with the speedometer cable. Happened in my car a few weeks back. Maybe. And I'll be back sometime tomorrow. Where are you going, Jace? Abilene. As soon as I hit the highway, I put in a shortwave call to headquarters, station KTXA. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA, go ahead, Unit 10. This unit en route to Abilene. Request Abilene police secure names of all contacts made by subject Walter Deneen, registered Harris Hotel, there yesterday. Will do, Unit 10. Unit 10 sent piece of wire back to lab for examination. Any report yet? Not yet. Wire and fingerprints both under study. We'll keep you informed. 10 4, Unit 10, clear. KTXA, Austin. reached Abilene, I got a complete rundown on Walter Deneen's activities. It was too complete. Like he was making sure his time in the city would be accounted for. One of the people who'd seen him was his attorney. Well, yes. Yes, Ranger, Mr. Deneen spent several hours with me yesterday afternoon. We had dinner together last night. Went to the theater. What did he come to see you about? Well, some investments. He's been doing a little speculating, Cotton. Good or bad? Well, it's client business, and I don't think I have the right to discuss it. I can find out by checking with the exchange. I'm just asking you to save time. All right. His losses have been rather heavy. More than he could afford? Much more. He carry much insurance on his wife and child? A normal amount, nothing large. All right, thanks. One more thing. Are you sure Deneen doesn't benefit financially by his wife's death? Well, Ranger, he couldn't have gotten back to Ashton by 1.30 last night after we'd been out. That isn't what I asked. Well, Mrs. Deneen had a good bit of money in her own right. In case of her death, though, she had it tied up in trust for the child. But the child is dead, too. What happens now? Well, in that case, the entire state will probably go to Mr. Deneen. <laughs> I made one more 
stop before I headed back to Ashton. I paid a visit to the garage at the Hotel Harris. I keep the location of all guest cars on this index rack so we'll know which stores they're in when they want them. Was Walter Deneen's car in here yesterday? Deneen? That's um, D-I-N, isn't it? Uh-huh. No, there's no record of it. Was he a guest at the hotel? Yes. Is there any parking lot around here he might have used? Not convenient to the hotel, and parking is free here for guests, so I don't think he'd use a lot. Neither do I. Thanks. Before I left Abilene, I called my headquarters. They had a report. No strange prints had been found in Deneen's house. The wire key looked like a plant. I hung up and made another call to Sheriff Ross. I'm beginning to wonder about Walter myself, Jason. Why? He's been kind of curious about where you are. I told him you went to Abilene, just to see if it would draw him out. Good. How'd he react? Kind of nervous. Then he said something about flying up to Abilene and back. Of course, he never did say he drove it. No, but he gave the impression that he drove. Well, even so, he was there when the killing took place. Yeah, but the killer had the use of Deneen's car. Can you get your hands on the car? Well, it's over in back of the funeral parlor right now. That's where Deneen said he was going just a few minutes ago when he stopped by to ask about you. Well, grab that car and check it for fingerprints. I'll be there as fast as I can roll. <laughs> Howdy, Jade. Carl worked over, Sheriff? Yeah, ought to have reports on the prints soon. Send them to Austin. Find any strangers? Quite a few of one set that weren't Deneen's. Uh, if they belong to a professional killer, there's a good chance he'll have a record. Where's Deneen? My deputies are out looking for him. Why? I thought he was at the funeral parlor. So did I, until I went in to look for him after we finished on the car. Undertaker said he'd left more than an hour ago by the front door. Mm, must have spotted you working over the car. <laughs> Come on, let's find him. Yeah. Not at the house, not any place in town. Where could he be if he hasn't run out? Trying to cover up for a couple of mistakes? He won't run, not yet. Why? Because his alibi is airtight. We can shake it, but unless we find the killer he hired, we can't shake it enough. Yeah. He took a big gamble, and he's got too much at stake to run off. His wife's money? How'd you know about that? Just thinking back. A little late. Folks knew Mrs. Deneen's family left her well off. Walter married her not long after they passed on. A lot of people thought the money had something to do with it. I wish you'd remembered that sooner. Well, Jace, they seem close. And then there's the baby. Baby was just something extra that got into Neen's way. Oh. He'd never gotten any of the money if... KTXA to Unit 10. Or maybe a report on the prints. Hmm. Unit 10. Go ahead, KTXA. Have report on prints lifted from car at Ashton, Texas. One set identified as belonging to Joe Crofton. Joe Crofton? Uh, any line on his whereabouts? Finished serving parole four months ago. Last address known to parole office was shack located western slope of Casket Mountain. 10-4, unit 10, clear. KDXA Austin. Crofton must be the killer then, Jace. I'll bet on it. How far to Casket Mountain? About 20 miles, then turn south another five. After that... Well, we'll need horses if he's far up. You should have brought your horse along the trailer with charcoal. Oh, I can borrow one. Crofton's going to be tough to take. You sound like you know him. I wrote the ticket for his last trip to Huntsville six years ago. That was murder, too, but oh, he no. copped out with a manslaughter plea. Better not take any chances, Jason. If he starts shooting, we'll have to toss it back dead center. No. we got to take him alive. He'll talk to keep from burning once we get him. Yeah. Yeah, I see. If Walter Deneen paid him to do the job, he's the only one who can break Deneen's alibi. That's right. So no matter what happens, we got to take him alive. <laughs> Crofton's cabin was up, all right. Way up. The sheriff borrowed a horse from the man who directed us. Quite a climb, Jace. Well, not so bad following this wash, though. Suppose he isn't there. I got a hunch he will be. I don't think Deneen had enough money to pay for this killing. He was almost broke. You mean he planned to pay off out of his wife's money when he got it? Yeah. Uh, wonder how Walter arranged for him to get the car that night. Not much to arrange. Left it near the airport with the keys in it. 
Crofton brought it back and left it in the same spot. Probably left the house key for him, too. Glove compartment, maybe. Yeah. With the airport 40 miles from Ashton, nobody recognized the car or a strange driver. Come in at night, use an abandoned road. Yeah. Look. Huh? Hey, another horse left tracks in here, too. Yeah. And they're fresh. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, oh, boy. It must be Crofton's horse. No. Ryder was taking the rough way. Just cut into the wash here to find a better trail. Crofton lives up here. He'd know the best trail. Well, who else would be coming up here? Deneen, to shut him up. Come on. Yeah, here, Darko. give off. Not too fast, Jason. We'll spill. You gotta risk it. Too slow, we'll be too late. <laughs> reached the shack and crept up on it. There was no horse around and no sign of life. Tried to draw fire by showing ourselves, but none came. We had to go in. All right. Hold your gun ready, Sheriff. And don't come in till I call you. Right, Jace. All right, Sheriff. Come in. Nobody here, huh? Oh, well, wait a... Oh... That Crofton? Yeah, that's him. Deneen got here first. Jace, this fellow looks like he shot himself. Guns in his own hand. Mm. Now, what's his paper beside him? Let's see. Jace, he did kill himself. This note says so. Confesses the murders, too. Sure it does. But Walter Deneen wrote that. And that note's gonna hang him. How do you know? You ever seen Deneen's writing? No, but I've seen Crofton's before. He signed his name with an X. Prison records show he's illiterate. Never could read or write. Come on, Sheriff. Gonna put out a pickup for Deneen? We'll pick him up ourselves. He can't be far off. But if he'd headed back down the wash, we'd have passed him on our way up. He must be going across the top of the mountain to go down the other side. Come on. Yeah. We our horses as fast as they could move. We spotted a rider ahead of us as he topped the slope. He heard us because he looked back and then whipped his mouth and disappeared. He knows we're on him. Got about 300 yards. We'll get him. Keep piling leather. Yeah. We're coming to the top now. Keep low on the saddle. Watch out for an ambush. There he is. Don't go down too fast, Sheriff. Your horse will come with the downgrade. The knee was pressing too hard, Jay. He fell. Look. Yeah, he scrambled behind the rocks. Whoa, whoa, charcoal. Oh, yeah. Boom. Hit the dirt. <laughs> Let your mouth go. Go on, Charlie. Go on. He's down under that rock shelf. Perfect cover. Not too perfect. Bullets will ricochet back from that ledge behind him. See that dent in the ledge? Yeah. Draw your gun and we'll empty it on him. Hit right below the dent. Hi. Right. All right. Let's hope for a billiard shot. Start firing. <laughs> Gun out, Deneen. All right. Don't shoot anymore. Here. Here it is. Ow. Okay, Sheriff. Let's take him. And I was sorry for you, all up until a few hours ago. You got to get me to a doctor. You're not hurt badly. We'll get you to a doctor. All I want to know is how you met Crofton. Come on, Walter, talk up. I, I, I saw his picture in the paper when he got out of jail. I, I made a deal with him a couple of months ago. Yeah. <sighs> a deal to wipe out your own wife and kid. Oh. <laughs> Must be great to be as brave as you are. Get up, Deneen. You've got a long way to go. Walter Deneen confessed and made a plea for clemency. It was not granted. And on the 11th day of October 1947, he died in the electric chair at Huntsville. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae. 
Dre is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Lorene Tuttle, Michael Ann Barrett, Hal March, and Paul Fries. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcutt, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Today, enjoy the sparkling big show with stars including Ginger Rogers, Fred Allen, Dolores Gray, George Sanders, Lawrence Melchior, and your glamorous hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then Phil Harris and Alice Faye bring you 30 minutes of comedy. Later, Theater Guild on the Air stars Rosalind Russell and Walter Abel in Good Housekeeping by William McCleary. Yes, for great entertainment, stay tuned to NBC. The NBC radio network is now entering its second quarter century as the leader in radio programming. Next, it's the big show. All this and Tallulah 2 on NBC. Welcome back. Well, this is a script for use and one of those, you know, kind of grim old-time radio stories. Oh, definitely well done. Yeah, you know, it was weird this time hearing Lorene Tuttle do this uh, performance at the time that we're hearing her in Sam Spade because the voice she uses is very, very close to Effie. I did find myself wondering whether the husband asked her for the money or jumped immediately to homicide. He strikes me as someone who might have done the latter. Then again, I kind of imagine the plea for clemency that he would have ended up delivering would be something like, don't execute me, I'm a childless widower, or something equally as shameful. In terms of other series that we could recommend, if you enjoy Tales of the Texas Ranger, we played quite a few procedurals since uh, Dragnet left in the recent past. And then, of course, we'll be playing Dragnet again in less than a year now. So most of the similar series are relatively recent. However, I'll throw out one series that it's been a while since we played an episode of that you might enjoy, and that is The Lineup. It's a very interesting uh, uh, police procedural series. It was produced by Jaime Del Valle, who's also doing Johnny Dollar. And it stars uh, William Johnstone, Wally Mayer, and later Jack Moyles. It does a good job of uh, portraying uh, urban crime realistically with a lot of interesting cases. It was a bit of a bear for us to uh, wrangle because there were so many episodes out there, so many different logs and schemes and episode titles. And you heard what some of those later episode titles did to me on Thursday. But it's a good series, uh, and you can check that out at biglist.greatdetectives.net or by searching in uh, your podcast app store. Now, listener comments and feedback. Listener comments and feedback now. And we have a message from Ben, who says he's been listening to the podcast for years, but never had said thank you before. He then writes, You've sent me to sleep on countless nights. Murder is definitely the best soundtrack to nod off to. Thanks so much for the comment, Ben. Uh, The whole sleep angle was something I never planned on when I started the podcast. But then uh, the great detectives of old time radio kept appearing on all of these podcast to fall to sleep list. I think somewhere like between three and five different lists by different websites. And I didn't quite know how to feel about it. And I think it might be because of the fact that I started this podcast in my 20s and I think I'd not quite gotten out of the stage of life where I did not really appreciate sleep that much. And so I tended to associate sleep with boredom. Now I'm getting into my 40s and I appreciate it a bit more and associate sleep with relaxation. I think that's the right association because we all have things we do before we go to sleep. I mean, some folks, you know, before they're supposed to go to sleep, they get on their phone or they watch TV, which is not a good idea to do. And I'm not judging anybody. I mean, I 
I do that plenty myself. But the best thing for sleep is when you are able to just uh, listen to something that's relaxing. And hopefully, you know, you time everything so you get all the way through the program, but Sometimes that doesn't happen. I know because I've gotten to the point where I will on occasion fall asleep on old time radio programs. It happened uh, quite a bit last year when I would be up late on uh, Saturday nights, you know, trying to get through my recording or not even so late relatively, but did a lot of walking, uh, took a long walk and was just worn out. So I'd be listening to something and talk myself into you know, it, you, you've got your show notes finished. You can just go and lie down on the couch and finish listening to this. And I'm listening to the program, I'm listening to the program, and then my wife is waking me up like two or three hours later. I will say that I did go back and finish listening to it in the morning or in the afternoon, uh, depending on the day and when I woke up. Definitely before I recorded the commentary, I'd know what happened because it would not do much good to say, well, this started out interesting enough, but I, I fell asleep. So anybody out there know what happened, uh, just go ahead and drop me an email. That's generally not considered a good hosting tactic. So I, I, go, I do go back if I fall asleep and make sure I know what happened before I start recording commentary. So I'm glad if folks are able to get some relaxation from the podcast. All right, well, that will actually do it for today. Now let's go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Michael, Patreon supporter since March of 2016, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Michael. And that will do it for today. If you're not subscribed to this podcast, you can do so at any number of great podcast apps and get another Radio Detective uh, drama delivered to you six days a week. You can subscribe at the Apple Store, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, or Amazon Music at Amazon.com slash OTR Detectives. And if you are enjoying this podcast, you can rate and review wherever you download your podcast from. And that will do it for today. Next Saturday, we will be back with another episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers, and on Monday, we'll have Sam Spade. But coming up tomorrow, we're bringing you an encore presentation of a special we aired 10 years ago, commemorating the end of the golden age of radio. Listen, and you'll hear... Mike? Pirelli? Anybody here? Captain Rockin, down this door. Come on up. And... Okay. All right, Pirelli, I... Oh, yeah. You got a gun, hmm? You kids have been waiting for you. Uh, you're a lousy shot, Pirelli. Okay, Danny, I give up. I give up. I give up, Danny. Danny, huh? Is that who you were waiting for with this gun? Danny Russelov? Yeah. Yeah, I thought... I, I read Danny was getting out tonight. Who are you? Who are you, mister? My name is Dollar. Now sit down over there by that table. Yeah. What are you doing here? I've come to pick up some money, Pirelli, a hundred thousand dollars. No. From the safe in your cellar. No, you got no right to that. I haven't, huh? You think I didn't know what's in the safe? I'm sure you did. And it all better be in it now. That's Max, though. The Gackies. He's dead, Pirelli. Only a couple of hours ago in the prison hospital. You're lying. You want to call him up and check on it? Dead. Jackie's dead, huh? That's right. Oh. Yeah, half of that dough is mine. That's mine, Dollar. I don't think so. Oh, no. Dollar, huh? You, you Johnny Dollar? You're the insurance dick. That's yeah. right. And I'm here to get that money. No. I'm also here for another reason. Yeah? Like what? 
to save you a worthless carcass if I can. I hope you'll be with us tomorrow. In the meantime, do send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash GreatDetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.